in a school, it's doing, and you're doing, what we hoped would happen. And that is engaging in the issues of the day and learning and becoming better citizens and going on to do great work. I made a lot of notes today, but I, of course, have a good memory, so. <clears throat> I came from a fairly poor family. Uh, nobody in the family had been to college. I got a science prize in high school and uh, was able to get into a small college in upstate New York. Uh, two years later, I got a uh, scholarship at Yale University and uh, was, my dream at that point was to become a great scientist. <clears throat> but my experience at Yale, uh, there were some difficulties there, but I began getting and learning about politics. I was working, one of my three jobs at Yale was to work with Dr. Phil Moresi Northrop on a book on philosophy, started reading it, uh, uh, began uh, monitoring political classes. A number of things happened politically at the university in 1947, and I began thinking what my life was all about. I uh, had a lot of family problems. My brother and I escaped to California out of upstate New York, Saratoga Springs, where we grew up. Uh, because we felt we had to take another look at what we're doing. And I wound up on a job at North American Aviation, a factory job, and began learning something about uh, what workers in that factory were facing. Uh, it was not well organized. Uh, it was an aircraft plant. We were working on the first F-86 Sabre jet uh, that uh, was ready to go to war, as this country often does. And uh, I became active in the union. Uh, I, would, so I had signed up to go back to Yale a year later, uh, but decided that it was much more fun organizing workers and trying to achieve some benefits from work uh, at North American Aviation, so I didn't go back. I got elected to office, and three years I was president of the local union, and uh, I had been uh, editor of the newspaper. That was my first volunteer job in helping organize the factory. And we did a beautiful job of organizing in my department, the experimental department, and I really liked what I was doing. And uh, again, a lot of the lessons that I'm learning here today were the kind of lessons we were learning uh, doing organizing. Uh, my big dream when I became president local was that we would go back to the 1941 experience where uh, U.S. troops broke up a strike at that plant because they were seeking wages for aircraft work equal to the other members of the union in the automobile industry. Uh, automobile industry, a lot of it's unskilled. It's very highly skilled in the aircraft plant, yet we were 25 cents an hour behind. The wages were, you know, 150, $2 an hour at the time. We didn't have the same benefits, didn't have a retirement program. So we built ourselves up to a point uh, of challenging the corporation on, on the question of equality. Well, I was quite young and, and didn't have the, the, the full backing of the International Union at this point, but we took a strike vote and we had a strike for 53 days. Uh, we didn't really win that strike, but we held our line on the principle of equality a year later, we won that in negotiations uh, with the North American Aviation Company. I then was an administrative assistant to Walter Ruther, met people like Dr. King and President Ken John Kennedy and, and Robert Kennedy at that time. My relationship with the Kennedys started back in 1956. I was a, a, a delegate to the 1956 Democratic Convention. We were supporting Stevenson and Kefauer on that ticket. Uh, the president of my union, Walter Ruther, and I were going into a UAW reception room and out came Robert and, and Jack Kennedy. And, and Jack Kennedy said, Walta, I would like your support as a candidate for vice president, along with Adlai Stevenson. And, and Ruther said, young man, you've got to change your voting record. And so that was in 56. Well, what happened was that both Johnson and, and, and Kennedy began changing their voting record to seek labor and liberal support. Uh, in 1960, I was for Stevenson, and uh, uh, I found out that he was not going to be making a really great effort to become a candidate because he thought he had a, 
a handle on it because he'd been the president, the candidate back in 56. Well, so I went to work with Robert Kennedy in that convention, and I was able to draw Adlai Stevenson friends uh, off of his delegation and, and got him to go for, with, with John Kennedy. We had two rebellions at that convention. One, the labor leadership, uh, Walter Ruther, George Meany, and all the, uh, the big labor guys were so incensed about the, uh, the choice of Lyndon Johnson as a candidate for vice president, they were rebelling and wanted to put up another candidate. We were actually for either Simonton or Jackson or something like that. Well, during the day, uh, working with Walter Ruther, we decided that you know, here Jack Kennedy had made his first decision and we shouldn't be opposing it. Uh, but another, another incident occurred where uh, the Michigan delegation was off the floor uh, trying to come up with another candidate. There were a lot of UAW people, you know, all the workers union people on that delegation. And uh, Bob Kennedy came by the uh, Walter Ruther's uh, headquarters in the, in the hotel and said, Walter, you know, uh, this, this looks like trouble. And, and Walter said, no, we got a couple of vice presidents over there to deal with it. Well, at that point, I, I suggested that uh, we get a, uh, a uh, statement that Lyndon Johnson had made after he'd been chosen as vice president candidate that he supported the most liberal Democratic uh, platform in the history of the, of the party and the civil rights plank when he'd been anti-civil rights in the Senate as a strong Southern Senator. Well, Bob Kennedy says, well, that's a great idea, Paul. And, and But then he laughed. He says, but none of us are delegates. How are we going to get it on the floor? And uh, he had a friend with him from Texas who reached into his pocket, pulled out a Texas delegate badge. Bob had, grabbed it and says, Paul, Here's the badge, put it on, take that statement over to the convention. Well, when I got to the convention, I met some of the people I had talked to voting for Stevenson, and, uh, or from Stevenson to, to Kennedy, and they were screaming at me. I had a difficult time getting into the Michigan caucus, finally did. I uh, got the vice president of the union to read the statement, and of course, uh, the, the, sort of the, you could feel the pressure out of the room. And we defeated uh, that effort of, of putting up another candidate, both in the Benjamin and labor leaders and the Michigan caucus. So that, that was really a good bonding experience with Bob. I'd, I'd worked with him over two weeks for you know, organizing delegates. And then this uh, great opportunity to, to uh, stop a rebellion, quell a rebellion is what we called it. So that happened. Um, I, left, I was in Detroit for four years with this administrative assistant to Rooster, went back to, back, uh, to California, came back to California and became a regional director and served on the national board for 10 years. Well, during that period, uh, we were working with Bob Kennedy on, on community action programs, on legislation. And we began working in, in Watts uh, before the first rebellion in 1965, organizing the Watts Labor Community Action Committee, where people were deciding for themselves what was happening in those neighborhoods. And we were helping finance it. Got, War on Poverty Money. We did the same thing in East Los Angeles, had the East Los Angeles Community Union. And we worked with Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta building the Farm Workers Union in, in the mid 60s. Well, this was a, you know, very successful operations going on and, and trying to build those communities and, and taking dealing with uh, the poorest workers in the country uh, and, 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 and solving some of the problems. Well, Bob Kennedy came to Watts in 1966 saw what we were doing, and, and he was then U.S. Senator, and left the uh, job of Attorney General. And uh, so we were able uh, to uh, work with him in setting up a community organization called the Bedford Stuyvesant and Restoration Project in Brooklyn among poor people again. And both, though, despite the war on poverty uh, uh, ending because of the cost of the Vietnam War, we decided the Vietnam War was more important than the war on poverty. Johnson decided that. Uh, we kept going and our unions kept organizing in those areas. And what's happened is those organizations, the Farm Workers Union, the Bed Stuy uh, Restoration Project, the Watch Labor Community Action Committee continue to this day. Uh, in 1968, uh, Robert Kennedy had a difficult decision on running for president. Uh, he, he felt very keenly that if he ran and Johnson was still like 
uh, running for uh, office, uh, running for re-election, that it would be considered a party splitting, a, a really uh, difficult thing to do. Well, he finally came to the decision uh, when he was breaking bread with uh, Cesar Chavez at the end of a very long fast up in Delano in March. And that day he said, uh, he told Cesar Chavez, look, uh, I've had difficulty making a decision to run, but I see people like you and your uh, fellow workers in, in the farm industry needing the presidency more than anybody else not more than anybody else, as much as, as, as many people in this country. And he decided to run. Well, on Tuesday, Gene McCarthy uh, did fairly well against Johnson in the, in the New Hampshire primary. And Bob Kennedy made his decision uh, to run uh, and, and announced it that week. Well, I went to a UAW board meeting. I was on the national board at the time. And, and, uh, and uh, first, I met Walter Rooster, my mentor, uh, parking lot. I said, Walter, there's some things happening in California I want to talk to you about. And he says, it's, a, it's the first thing on the agenda. Well, I had endorsed Robert Kennedy publicly before I left for the national board meeting. And uh, I knew I was going to be in trouble, but he was really tough on me about getting ahead of everybody else and, and making you. I said, look, I've been in the anti-war movement. That's where I met my wife, who's sitting here. Chairing a, uh, a very large uh, war rally in San Francisco, hundreds of thousands of people. I was co-chairing with Carl Reiner and uh, uh, Dalton Trumbo of the Hollywood Ten, and it was just a glorious day. Well, we met on party afterwards. Uh, Monica was there, out there someplace, and uh, we've been together uh, most of the time ever since. Um, anyway. Uh, I was in trouble uh, uh, at that, uh, with my membership of the National Board. In 72, I was defeated uh, because of my really strong efforts of being more progressive than many of the people on the board in the, in the, uh, in the anti-war movement and the civil rights movement and working with the farm workers. Uh, people didn't, um, some of the people on the board didn't think that was our job. Well, I felt it absolutely was our job. And when I was defeated in 72, uh, I was still uh, in pretty bad shape after the murder of Robert Kennedy, and uh, I moved out of town, I moved out to the desert, uh, because I just couldn't handle uh, life in Los Angeles at that point. It was just too depressing, and, and I was very angry, uh, because uh, when I think back to 1968, here in uh, this uh, very location, uh, we had such a great victory that night in 1968 when Robert Kennedy was elected and uh, uh, we were upstairs in the fifth floor, came down, Bob made his victory speech, thanked several of us. Uh, we walked off the platform different ways. I walked into the pantry area and uh, he came in and said, Paul, I want you and Jess Unruh, the chairman of the uh, California campaign, with me. And, uh, uh, and we turned and we shook hands with uh, two kitchen workers, as I read. He shook hands with two kitchen workers, I remember. Juan Romero, who was a picture of the, you saw that picture of him holding Robert Kennedy's head after Kennedy had been shot. Uh, we turned from there. I got the first bullet and went down. I didn't know Bob had been shot, and I didn't know that four other people had been shot, but during the following days, I, I knew all that. Well, such a great tragedy, such a great man, such a great victory, uh, was a most difficult experience that anybody could ever have. And uh, so, in 1987, when it was announced that this property was being considered by the school district for a school, I called the president of the school board at that point, Jackie Goldberg, and says, that's gotta be a Robert Kennedy school. And she says that sends chills up my back. And I said, why? And she said, I was a McCarthy supporter, but I watched him in the campaign. I heard his victory speech. And, he said, and she said, I told my McCarthy fans in my living room that I'm going to support Robert Kennedy. Well, it was such a great idea to, to do, because Robert Kennedy really felt very keenly about education uh, and health care for kids. And he particularly interested in the poor kids of this country. So, what uh, 
we were able to do, it was a tough fight. We had to fight off Donald Trump who owned the property and was going to build skyscrapers on it. Uh, we were going to, uh, one city, member of the city council was going to put a Walmart or a Home Depot on this property. And so we had a terrible struggle, struggle with the school board, because we had trouble getting four of the seven votes. The Conservancy wanted to save the hotel and rehab it. Actually, it was rotting in, in its place, it had been abandoned, and uh, uh, to, in order to preserve it, uh, it had had to be taken down to its uh, concrete structure and then rebuilt. Well, that's not preservation, that's a phony position to take. Well, they took us to court for a year. It cost a, a lot of money. So now we have a school which the LA Times, the LA Daily News called the, uh, the most expensive school ever built in, 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 the, in the country. Well, it is. And uh, my quick comment is the kids deserve it in this community. have been bussed out of here for many, for 30 years, or were in overcrowded schools. And I can talk about the overcrowded schools because we went and experienced some of them. And so we thought that the school idea was, was a great idea. Well, we, we won the, finally that, that fourth vote and, uh, on, on, the, on the school board and did it. So this school, it, it took, uh, we got titled finally, a lot of legal stuff too, titled in 2001, and the school uh, groundbreaking was 2006. Uh, members of the Kennedy family are here for the groundbreaking and have been very supportive of the school ever since. Uh, and so it's just been a wonderful experience getting that job done. Now let me leave you with uh, a couple of ideas. Um, first of all, I talked to the previous speaker up here who is just as interested as I am in community organizing since I've been doing it since 1947. Um, and we're talking about organizing the neighborhoods here to really deal with problems of the neighborhood and we're uh, based the organization here in this school. Uh, it's in line with, with my experience, his experience, and also Robert Kennedy's. And I think that's one of the things we can do is help change this neighborhood. Now, 4,000 students come into the school from a nine block area. That's one of the smallest areas in any school. What I like about this, the, what's happened in this school is that <laughs> it's not just a school, it's more like a university campus. There are three K through 12s here. There are uh, five high schools, there are three middle schools, there are three elementary schools, with six different curricula run by different organizations. So we really got a university campus here. So when I t t t uh, talked to the LA Times and the LA Daily News people, you didn't come to the school. You don't understand that if these schools have been, these three K through 12s have been uh, built separately, it would have cost a hell of a lot more than uh, 600,000. So let me, one last thing, I, I talked to uh, the, the media and uh, social networking person here talk today, what's, uh, uh, call him up, what's his name, forget it, we talked about social network in the media, and, oh, Ramesh. Huh? Ramesh. Ramesh. Uh, I talked to him, I've recruited him, and I recruited the, the teacher for community organizing, we're going to get community organizing, neighborhood organizing going into school, and we w would like to set up a social networking operation to find out who killed Robert Kennedy. That is not known yet. We know from new evidence, forensic scientific evidence, that Sirhan fired eight shots, shot me and five and four other people, but he never got a shot into Robert Kennedy. We've got the evidence that proves that, and we're taking the case to the U.S. We've already put it before the U.S. Attorney, and we're going to the Attorney General with it. And what we want to do is begin to inform people, and that's why we want to do a social networking uh, project as well as uh, set up, setting up a website. So, and also start a neighborhood organization. So, uh, I feel blessed uh, that some of my dreams have been uh, fulfilled. Uh, one of my nightmares was a terrible experience, but this school makes that uh, new dream of this school being the best in the country uh, a, a reality. Thanks very much. Yeah.